Okay, hi guys, welcome to Debbie's Rusty Brush. Um, today what we're going to be working on is a little table. It's a magazine rack table that I got at a thrift store. And you know, when you buy furniture, whether it be off Facebook Marketplace or in um, a thrift store, all of these pieces that we refurbish have a history to them. And um, you never really know what that history is. And sometimes when I'm painting, I'll make up a history for it, um, whether it be a scratch here or a ding there or whatever, there's a story behind that. Now this little piece, I have to say when I pulled it out, I was really shocked because underneath the um, tabletop was the story behind this piece. So I am going to read this story to you and then we'll get started. It says, hello, my grandpa made this magazine rack in the 1980s. He fell off a deck, broke his neck and became partially paralyzed in all limbs. He, fo he, for sorry, he focused on wood crafting after a long recovery. I have many things from him and I just can't keep everything. I wanted to share this little story so you know this simple little item has history and a story. I hope it finds a good home and gets a new life with a fun paint or new stain. He was so loved and so motivated to become so strong despite his injury. And this is a well-crafted little table. Um, it has obviously been well-loved throughout its life. I, you know, I forgot to take a good picture or um, video of it prior to getting started. Um, so you're going to see me do a little bit of the black paint job, a little bit of the smoky paint job that we have, and then we'll do um, some of the lavender and bees that we're going to put on this. And then we'll clear coat. Um, and that probably won't be done on the video because I want to give the flowers a good time to um, cure before I put the clear coat on that. And I need to buy a piece um, to go in the magazine rack between the two sides. That piece is missing and I want to replace that. Um, and so it, it won't be done prior to uh, when I get this video uploaded. Um, but I wanted to share this story with you and I wanted you to see this table. It had been very well loved. Um, there was stains and scratches on top. There was a molding piece that was coming loose that I did uh, glue back on. Um, and so some of the rungs were a little loose and so we got those where they're good and secure now. And um, with the paint on here, I didn't have to sand it back to get those stains off there. I just gave it a really good clean. We're painting it black, so um, nothing's going to show through. And so it's just going to be a cute little table when it's done. And um, when I put it in my booth or a marketplace, I will sell it with the story. So whoever gets it will know the history of this cute little piece. So, um, that's about it. If you like my channel, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, share with your friends. It helps my channel grow. Um, and without further ado, we're going to get started on um, showing just a little bit of the basic black paint job, a little bit of uh, making the smoky background, and then we'll show the um, painting of the lavender and the bees. And as always, I will speed it up and do a voiceover so you know exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing it, but you won't have to hang out with me for the entire time it takes to do this project. All right, thanks a lot, and let's get going. Okay, so I am just using a Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And I'm just going to put a good couple of coats over the entire piece um, to make sure that we have full coverage. At the top, I am going to put three coats on because I just want to make sure that it is uh, completely durable 
um, up there and then we'll clear coat it extra times as well. Okay, and here we are on the side. We're just going to get this fully painted. Um, here in a second, I'm going to give you a shot of the top of it where I did fix that piece of molding and I've got it all clamped together with some glue. Okay, so now we're just going to do some blending and I'm going to blend with some French millinery into that black and get a nice smoky color and I'll go through and put black all around the edges there um, just so that the center is smoking. All right, and now we're ready to start on our lavender. So what I've got now is I've got my dagger brush and I'm just going in with some uh, DIY paint in aviary. And I'm just making some swipes through here for the leaves on my lavender. And now I'm going to switch over to um, another DIY color called Apothecary. This one will show up a little bit better than the aviary. Uh, when it's wet, where you, before it was hard to see. And we're just going through and putting in uh, leaves and getting that in there with the dagger brush. Okay, now I'm going in with another DIY color um, called Water Lily. And I'm going to go through and just get the basis of our lavender on certain stems. Um, I'm not overly particular about um, how I'm placing the uh, petals of the lavender, but I am trying to be somewhat particular about where I uh, place each stalk of lavender just so that I have um, a symmetrical and interesting placement on those. So you just pick a stem and work your way down that stem for a ways. Um, and you just want to go ahead and get those in there. It's just little slashy movements that I'm making. I've seen people do this with uh, Q-tips as well and just do it with dots um, and so you don't have to be particular they don't have to be all even and meticulously perfect because they aren't in nature All right, so now I'm just going to go through with some amethyst from Dixie Belle um, because it was the purple I have and I don't have to mix it with my DIYs. Um, and I'm going through and just putting on um, just an accent. I don't want to cover all of the French melon or the water lily that I put down. I just want to put a another color for depth and interest onto each one of these uh, lavender areas. All right, and now I'm going to go in with uh, Lucky Lavender and um, just do the same thing. Go over the same area. I'm not covering up all of the um, water lily. I'm not covering up all of the amethyst. I'm not necessarily hitting every petal with it. Some I'm going towards the inside. Some I'm going towards the outside. Um, some I'm actually getting mixed in with the wet amethyst that is already there. Um, and that just gives an extra color. It gives dimension. 
um, the wind would be blowing through these in nature and the sun would be hitting them in different areas as the wind is moving them. Um, and so you just want to create that movement through the paint and just get that color added in. If you want an even lighter color, you could mix some white in with this um, Lucky Lavender and add in some highlights. I'm not going to do that step. I don't feel that it needs it, but it, you can. So it's important to remember that there's no right or wrong. You just want to do what you think looks the best. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting um, a couple of bees in here. So I'm just taking a little bit of my queen bee and I'm making the three sections of the bee um, in my yellow. And then I'm going to go in with little black dress. Um, and this was why it was important to have the smoky background or you would not have seen this if it was just on black because it would be black on black. And so now we're just going to add in the other sections of our bee, the head and the few little lines. And we're going to do that um, with our little black dress. Now bees are kind of fuzzy so you don't have to get real particular about having straight lines. Just go ahead and make it a little fuzzy. Now we're going to go ahead and put some wings on, and I've got a very, very light gray. This is a DIY, but it is a mixture of white swan and little black dress. Um, I needed a gray, and I didn't have one, and so I used what I had and made one. Um, and now I just put in the shape of the, the wings and put in some of the gray color, um, and then I blotted it off because we want it to kind of be see-through. And then I went through and I put in a few uh, lines in a darker gray. And now I'm going through with a light blue and I'm just putting in some highlight areas, but I still want it to be somewhat transparent. And so you'll see me go through um, and blot as well with that. Um, you can do that with any color that you want. You can use uh, some greens to add some color in there. I just did a light blue. Um, you could do pink or coral or because wings are see-through and they reflect the light. Um, and so you can use anything that color that you want in the prism to reflect that light. And now we're just doing another little bee. And um, we're going to put the little legs, the little antennas on after we get our black in here. We do that with the black. Um, and then we're going to go through and we're going to add our wings. So kind of the same process as we did on the other one. Um, the other one is just in a different uh, position than this one is. Again, remember that bees all look different um, and that none of them are perfect. So you just go through and get the um, impression of the bee and the stripes and uh, the wings in there and people are going to see what you want them to see. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Um, like I said, I will give it a clear coat. What I'm going to use is uh, Dixie Belle in satin to give this thing a good durable uh, clear coat. And then I may, even though um, I put the clear coat on, I may go ahead and do a finishing wax as well just to give it that little extra uh, protection and I personally love the way wax looks on a piece of furniture so um, I'm not sure with the black if I'm gonna go ahead and wax it I am gonna clear coat it um, but I want this painting to have a really good secure um, coating on it so that it's well protected so once again I appreciate you hanging out with me subscribe if you haven't share with your friends hit that little bell so you get notified anytime I upload a video and I'll see you again next week all right guys that was this little table that sucked <laughs>